I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Buzz! It's the Carby Enthusiasm <laughs> After Show. Happy New Year, Happy everybody. New Year. I am Christian Blatt. Yes, you are. Joined. As always, or almost always, by uh, Flobo Boys. Yes, almost always, indeed. Thank you so much for having New me. New content. New content every week. Every week. Our website. Yep. We'll uh, Rachel Goodman, thanks for returning. I am very excited. We thought to be we here. had scared you away last week. Yeah, I thought I had scared myself away well, last you, week. You missed uh, a very insightful conversation about urination. I heard. But don't because <laughs> where <laughs> where we left that, uh, we're gonna pick right up uh, today in a little bit. Uh, overall thoughts for. The surprise party. Flubba voice. Yeah, uh, here's the deal. We all know Larry's shows are a comedy of errors that pile on and pile on. And there were some episodes I've seen this season where I feel like I've seen the seams a bit. A lot of things aren't planted in Act mm -hmm. 1. Kind of seem like we're going to pay off in a certain way. And, and that way it's disappointing. But it's still a good ride. I mean, I'm not, I'm not actively hating the show. I'm still on board. Yeah. But I thought there was other stronger episodes this season. You know, in the uh, in the old days, Disneyland, the best rides were the E-Ticket. All right? And mm -hmm. I, those were the, you only got a few of those. Yeah. This is not an E ticket. This is like a C ticket. You oh, got a okay. lot of the extra though. Those are, it's like it's like I'm not gonna get off this ride, but it's not the most fun. Gotcha. You know, it, there have been better episodes this season. We didn't have to look at the series as a whole. Uh, but you know, you as threw long me as off with E ticket. I was like a, like a digital ticket, but you yeah, mean it's like an old a class it's, thing. It's, it's like an old thing. It's, I'm a Six Flags guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I could tell that about it. <laughs> but uh, Knott's Berry Farm person, uh, yeah. Rachel, uh, your thoughts on this episode? I thought it was pretty funny. I liked the payoff at the end. I liked the twist yeah. with the other guy actually, with the doctor yeah. having the heart attack. I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, so overall, I enjoyed the episode. I was a little taken aback by the Nazi jokes that we had just because it's like, eh. They, this has been done so many times. Why are we doing this? I, and I, also with good. German Shepherds, it's... Uh, there's already a hard enough time for people who own German Shepherds, let alone to have someone portray a dog like this on TV. Oh, yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, and they're really good dogs, but people, a lot of people assume otherwise because of seeing them portrayed differently. Right, not all German Shepherds uh, have the same political and uh, <laughs> views as, as Adolf did. That's you right, know? that's right. He, he, you know, he doesn't speak, well, he doesn't speak at all, but he doesn't <laughs> represent the German Shepherd community. Sure. So, uh, yeah, no, no, I can I can certainly understand that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, to Flobo's point, it's not a storyline that we've seen before, but it sort of feels like it. Yeah. It's also like, I almost wonder, you know, in like 25 years ago, would that have been like really funny and crazy? Like, oh my God, it's this anti-Semitic dog. Yeah. And then just like in 2020, well, it's like, I, look, I, I think we've all seen anti-Semitic dogs out there. Here's the thing, is that I feel like we were watching this with Mel Brooks in the yeah. 60s and 70s, and I'm like, okay, this has been done. It's It was hilarious. Sure. But I also felt like it was over, it's been done so many times, maybe not in that exact way, but they could have found a different way to, it just felt so random and yeah, It just didn't me. really fit in other than to have him eat something. You know what I mean? Like, it was just like, why is that, why is that in this episode? Yeah. Usually, like, to, again, to Flobo's point, they they pile the the ridiculous comedy of errors on top of each other, and then they all kind of feed in. This one, this was like the old uh, one of these things is not like the other. It really didn't fit. Yeah. yeah. And if it doesn't fit, but it's so funny, you don't care. Right. I think the issue that that hit me uh, wrong, I should say, was that they got explained in the middle of the episode. It was like, oh, he was he's saying heal. I've trained them a certain way. I thought I was pretty much done, but th I felt like that could have came in later if you want to make that. I'm surprised that Larry brought it up right away. That seemed like something you go home to, you talk to your friends about, you're worried about right. it. Right. You know, if this were Seinfeld, they'd sit at the diner, they'd all talk about it, and then it's like, well, I gotta go back, I gotta tell them, I gotta ask you. Uh, and then they just got right to it. But yeah. uh, let's talk about the actual surprise party and uh, why Larry felt like it wasn't a good idea. And uh, the notion that he had that uh, Susie was trying to kill Jeff. Uh, Rachel, what do you think about this as a, as a, as a, as a, uh, as, a uh, as a Larry David, sorry, I almost called him somebody else that I know named Larry. That's what it was just, oh, great fun. Uh, a Larry David storyline, the TV Larry David. It felt like it fit. I yeah. bought into it. I bought into the fact that he'd think that Susie was trying to kill him. Well, I was not convinced she wasn't. I wasn't convinced she wasn't either, yeah. uh, especially when she got the knife and she yeah. was cutting. And Also, they never explained why she was was looking to get away so fast to the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, yeah I, I do wonder if maybe we'll get that next week. But yeah, yeah. I, I did think that afterwards. I'm like, wait, well, wait, why is she looking to go away? It's yeah. not like 
it's a surprise for Jeff. Like, yeah, we're just going to take him. You know, it's like, I couldn't figure out where to go. We're just going to go somewhere that there was a deal. Yeah, so there's there's none of that. It was like somebody trying to flee, a cr- like, a crime scene. That's exactly the way yeah. it looked. And also, I mean, unless Susie was just so, you know, obtuse that she didn't recognize that Jeff wouldn't want to go to the Caribbean. Right. But, I mean, that sounds like Susie, too. But... I feel like it was more of, oh no, she needs to get away because she doesn't. She is doing something that she needs to escape from. True. <laughs> I feel like the the Bahamas part because it wasn't answered this week was the reason why I wasn't feeling that was going to happen. But yeah, the idea of the potential of being someone able to kill her husband, I'm like yeah, I could totally start doing that. Yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you <laughs> know, there's a part not? of me that's surprised she hasn't done it yet. And, exactly. And like Susie said, there'd be no proof. She threw him a surprise party. Right. Yeah. What a good way to. Kill your husband. I mean, not really. <laughs> what a great but... thing. Yeah. Good to know. At the heart of the episode is uh, Larry befriending Wally, played uh, wonderfully by Fred Armisen. And I do like that it starts off in true Larry David fashion where he insults <laughs> someone uh, in, in a way by completely uh, ignoring and disrespecting his, his condition, his disability. And just running past him to go to the bathroom. Look, Larry has a point that, like, you, how long have you been here? And I'm done already, you know? Yeah. Like, so, of course, I ran past you. Um, but what did you think, Flobo, about this character of Wally? Oh, man, it's, it's hard for me to say because I'm, I'm, when I perform comedy, mm-hmm. the idea is that once you establish a character and you give them one trait that's debatable or, like, you can, like, Shoot, punch down with, punch up with, then you could totally have fun with that character. But Wally was so innocent, yeah. and he was so slow, you kind of felt bad for him. You know what I mean? Having Larry zoom past him, or you know, have him manipulate him for the placard later on. So I understand the intent, and it's, it's really formulaic for the show, but I, I did not like, thought that was hilarious, if that makes sense. Right. I, I thought, Rachel, that it was, it was funny, though, that they end up being friends. You know, because yeah. like, it felt like one of those moments where he's like, you know, it's like, do you want to get coffee? Not now, some other time. That it was going to turn into a thing where Wally was going to keep trying to get together with him. But then it's like, no, they just skip that part and they actually do yeah. hang out. Were you surprised at all? Uh, no, because I knew what Larry wanted. Oh. <laughs> mm. I knew. I mean, I, I think that he kind of knew the, about that placard before yeah, he even sure. saw it. The other thing I just want to say, I found it especially hilarious when Larry dropped the line of Wally only having one speed on his walker. Yeah, I was like, that's okay, true. that's pretty funny. But then, yeah, I, I did expect that Larry was going to hang out with him just to get what he wanted. Yeah. And that after that, Wally would never hear from him. And I almost expected that if... If Adolf had not eaten the placard, that Larry would have actually said he lost it anyway. Just oh, to keep wow. It. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Think I, the worst. <laughs> I definitely agree. Yeah. That, uh, that's probably what his plan was, to never give it back. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you do have to feel for Wally because he gets recruited to spy on Susie. He, you know, at the travel agent, he then has to become the one to warn Jeff, but uh, he has to park so far away because Adolf eats the placard. And it's just, you watch what physically he has to go to because he's made friends with Larry David. And it's just like, oh, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, that's a common trend in the show. <laughs> that's also true. Right. Yeah. Also yeah. true. And Larry doesn't even let him in his house. No, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's like, Leon's allowed, but like, you know, Wally is not allowed, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he thinks they're in the same way as the mailman because the mailman doesn't get to yeah. right. get into the house either. The mailman got in trouble last week. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, uh, yeah, I thought that uh, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a funny character. Look, we've referenced it already. Uh, this uh, Alan Tudyk character of the guy who makes it so that you can keep your coffee warm. Uh, it's, it's all well and good, but <clears throat> how many people, when they order coffee at a Mocha Joe's or a Latte Larry, are able to enjoy the coffee there. I, I, I would say, I'm just going to guess, 80% of people are getting the coffee to go. Right. I don't think you get to take that mug with you to go. Right. Uh, but, you know, maybe if they had that policy, it's like, just bring it back next time. We'll <laughs> wash it, or you can wash it, whatever. Um, Guess what I, they're never seeing again. Right, right. that mug, right, exactly, because I would keep one. Yeah, it's like $8 a pop on Amazon. Right, I know, right? Yeah. So, you yeah, flip has already looked. I totally have. Uh, so, I, 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 I think just on the whole, it feeds into the fact that the dog storyline didn't fit in. It's also like, okay, we're getting the sense that Larry doesn't have a, a good business acumen. We'll talk about the the biggest indication of that in a moment. But I wanted to start small with this mug. Uh, what are your thoughts as he's talking about these mugs, Flobo? 
I just can't wait for the eventual like cluster when this thing opens. Where there's no parking we established. The scones are going to be hard. Uh, you'll get to the bathroom part later. And these mugs. It's almost like everything's being focused on except the coffee. It's called Latte Larry's. I'm like, we, what is going on? And look, we all remember that uh, you know there was a, a lawsuit that uh, McDonald's infamously lost from mm -hmm. a, a, yeah. a, I believe it was a woman who uh, placed her coffee uh, between her legs while she was driving and it spilled. And then McDonald's had to make sure their coffee wasn't so hot anymore. Larry's keeping your coffee hot right. the whole time you're there. Yeah. I expect a lawsuit at some point. What do you think, Rachel? Yeah, so there was actually, it was a woman. There was an Alex Ruins Everything episode about it, okay. too, where he debunked the whole entire thing. But basically, um, yeah, I, I see this going incredibly badly for him in true Larry David fashion, where he might even accidentally spill the coffee on somebody and it turns into a mess. But I want to see if they bring back the beans from the other episode. Right, oh. when they were, uh, where did they go? They go to Mexico? Mexico. Yeah, when they were down was, in Mexico. Yeah. And yeah, the last we saw of those beans, Larry was on the runway waiting. <laughs> now, look, we know Larry can, uh, he can charter a private flight all for himself and his beans, which I'll just assume that's what he did. But uh, yeah, we'll <laughs> see where the beans came from. Because maybe it's like, well, we can't get those beans. We got to get them from somewhere else. Uh, I know, Folgers Crystals. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Cutting uh, across. Yeah. So, yes, and then obviously I was glad that we got the tour of the restrooms. Um, when they dealt with this last week, Rachel, what were your thoughts when Larry was talking about designing the P-Cube <laughs> and that there's no defecation allowed? Uh, I'm wondering if maybe your first thought was the same that James Flobo and I had was like, but what about women? Yeah. How are they supposed to use, you know, they are there urinals in the women's room as well, which obviously physically isn't going to help. But I look, I don't know, I don't know what <laughs> different shape. It is. <laughs> yeah. Larry thinks about it. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think last week and what did you think this week about um, the P cube and just sort of the the uh, elimination uh, that happens at Latte Larry's? So without getting too graphic, the sure. first thing I noticed last week and this week is the door that is on the P-tube or whatever they're calling it. The P-cube? Yeah. 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 Patent pending. I could see that going very badly. I'm oh, just, it will. I'm just going to say that right now. Well, just think guillotine. I do now. Just think guillotine. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, like, it just, and, and they made a point this week of showing it drop like the guillotine. Yep. So and, I'm like, yep, this is and not that, oh, I was thinking that way. I thought, like, backsplash. That's even worse. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, this, the, yeah no, no. The guillotine this, this, is like, a little bit worse than backsplash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I just have a feeling, too, that people are still going to defecate regardless, and it's just going to be a huge mess, yeah. and that it's going to be this thing where, uh, I mean, people are still going to go, even if they end up missing the, yeah. the P2, P2. Look, I, well, I, look, let's not get too graphic here, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know about you, Flippa, but I've been in Shea Stadium on opening day, and it didn't yeah. matter how many bathrooms there were. Uh, all of a sudden, the sinks became bathroom, bathrooms, the trash cans became bathrooms, <laughs> the uh, hallway was also yeah. bathroom. Yeah, this, it does, York, baby. yeah, you can you can do whatever you want, and the, yeah. you know the, you can put whatever rules you want in place. But I, I don't know that people are going to abide by them. So specifically, Rachel, this week. We had the we got to look at the the ladies' room, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> neither Larry or Freddie Funkhauser, aka Vince Vaughn, could even test out for pretend. Yeah. They weren't even actually using them. Yeah. So, what did you think about the accommodations at Latte Larry's in the lazy ladies' room? Uh, someone is going to complain the first day. There will be a, yeah. uh, possibly more lawsuits. For yeah, Larry. because I can imagine that. Even if someone actually tries to use it, one, they someone had, would have to teach them how to use it the sure. same way they're teaching, yeah. the same way Larry's trying to teach Fred. Yeah. Um, but then even if they go through and they learn how to use this, some person is going to bend down and not be able to get up or like yeah. hurt themselves. Oh, well, yeah. That's the fact that one, you're striding it like a motorcycle, and <laughs> yeah. two, there's no dividers. So you just look at your next door neighbor going, Yeah. <laughs> don't mind me. You know? Yeah. No, and look, uh. th look, I don't even think you, you have to be featured on my 600 pound life for that setup to be difficult for you. Oh, yeah. You know, I think maybe if you're a gymnast, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But for you know most average people, uh, I think it's gonna be very difficult to use that. And I just love the matter of fact, it was like, well, there's the bar right here and you hold it. Let me show you. It's like, all right, this hurts my leg. Yeah, where your pants they, go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that was the most Larry explanation of the whole thing. Where do your pants go? We'll <laughs> figure it out later. I, it's funny though, because he is setting it up the way a male 
you know, urinal would look. I'm offended. No, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm no that's exactly where, where it would have the two stalls right next to each other. So he's just trying to be revolutionary. Sure. It's as though it were designed by, hypothetically, you know, a, a <laughs> man that grew up in a community <laughs> of men never saw a woman. Uh, then had a written out description <laughs> of what the difference is. And it was like, all right, I think I, I, I think I can figure out how they can go to the bathroom. Yeah. And, you know, Larry, for quite some time, lived in a home with uh, his wife. Uh, and you'll just assume he's been around other women. Women. Uh, just doesn't seem to understand uh, anatomy. And I'm not even talking about, like, when you're going to the bathroom. Just physical anatomy of, like, you know, how you can... How, I don't know that he could have invented a seat. For a woman, just sit down. Yeah, you know. Fortunately, it just uses regular, regular seats. It makes you wonder on, on the writing level. So I was like, we're going to reinvent the toilet for this show. Well, how do we do this? Well, I would just love to see like all yeah. the other ideas that didn't make it to the screen. Right. Yeah. The non PQ. Yeah, yeah. The P triangle. The, I don't the know. P triangle. The P triangle. The P slope. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can safely expect that uh, this is not going to go well. Uh, as we talk about the the spite shop, though, we did uh, we did meet someone new this week, Mocha Jane. Yeah, yeah. Mocha Joe's mom, who does not care for Larry, uh, but I did enjoy the glee with which Larry showed her the uh, handicap placard. Yeah, so he's like, I get to park here. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of Mocha Jane, Rachel? Well, when she saw the placard, I thought she was actually going to go up and inspect it and then yeah. call and see if the number matched his name. Oh, yeah. That's Ooh. what I thought, because I figured she wouldn't trust that he would just randomly show up with a placard one day. True. Um, but also, I thought she was going to call to get his car towed the first time yeah. when he didn't have the placard. Well, because he said he was only going to be there for a minute, but then he takes the time to take Vince Vaughn, Freddie Funkhauser, on a tour. Yeah. And yeah. That's a more try fun. to use the ladies' room. Yeah, so he's in there for a long time. Yeah. Parked in the handicap spot. Yeah. You know, and then he also doesn't run into, you know, maybe a handicapped person waiting for the spot when he comes out. You True. Know? Could could have been Wally. That's how he could have met Wally, by the way. But, you know, that's not It's really, all par for the course. Not really the Every, way everyone about. who parks in the handicap spot is like, oh, I'm just here for a second. That second could be for whatever. But I totally like your idea of her like, calling it in and be like, ah, he's not real or whatever. <laughs> but I think the fact that later on when he had the placard, he, like, used it as Captain America's shield, you know? Like, oh, yeah. I got the thing. You can't <laughs> yeah. stop me. He, no. uh, yeah, I think that, uh, that this will come back. I think Mocha Jane's going to come back. I also think that the receptionist at the doctor's office who felt harassed by Larry, I think we can see where she might come up again. <laughs> but it's not a hit. It's, it's not he a hit. said it's not a hit. Why is it a hit? Well, just because you don't say that it's a hit. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for Flobo, but look, there have definitely <laughs> been times in my life where I said, no, I'm not hitting on you. Yeah. But if I'm saying that, right. it means I'm so bad at it that it's very obvious that that's what I'm doing. Is it obvious, though? <laughs> I'm just in a waiting room, just waiting for no reason. Yeah, well, I did like the idea that he goes back. He goes back to to wait. Yeah, not for the doctor. Yeah. He's just waiting. Uh, it's, just, it's a waiting room. Let it hit. Flobo, you think it's a safe bet that uh, we'll see that receptionist again? And oh yeah. Maybe she will also come along with a past receptionist and maybe his former assistant. Just guessing. And just going through the seats. And I just I fear. I mean, I want to see it. And I don't want to see it at the same time. If it ends the same way Seinfeld did with a giant trial with everyone coming around and being like, right. hey, screwed me over," or you know, try to be manipulative. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I thought about the Seinfeld finale recently, and I don't think I've seen it in 20 years. And uh, I've heard that it holds up better than people remember. It was I remember, being, I I remember being like somewhat disappointed, but I didn't hate it. Yeah, same here. Uh, so, uh, did you hate it, Rachel? I well, okay. First of all, I haven't seen it since it came out. Yeah, in that's the right. 90s, I, mean, I, I haven't seen it. Since and I was like 10, but uh, I did. All right, show off. <laughs> but I did, I did. I was 45 <laughs> that day. I did like it though, but okay. I would have to watch it again to see if my right. you know 32 year old self. <laughs> my youth. <laughs> Full yeah. I totally appreciate it. Yeah. I still youthful. Self. I was like 10 or 11, yeah. Yeah, all right, we get it. You already <laughs> said that. Right. I had graduated college. That's right. right. Uh, let's, uh, as we're talking about Dr. Holzer, let's talk about giving himself the nickname Rusty. I, I don't like, first of all, the nickname Rusty, one, just in general, I don't like that. Two, you wow. can't give yourself a nickname. What a hater. And three, you don't put it on your business card. 
Flobo, well, you sound like you disagree. Uh, yeah, because I go by Flobo Boys professionally. Uh, but you are also Flobito. D- yeah, when I New content every week. Flobito.com. Yeah. I thought that was your full name, by the way, was Flobito.com. <laughs> New content every week. <laughs> it's it's only like after I knew you for like a year. I'm like, oh, his name's just Flobo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. I, I'm a firm believer that the nicknames you get, you get from other people. Yeah. I, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I have my nickname on my cards. I have all my nicknames on my cards. Wait, your name's not really Flobo? It's not. It's uh. not Flobito. It's not Flobino or Flobotomist. Is it Rusty? Because that <laughs> Just bring it all full circle. Is it Adolf? Is it no. Adolf? <laughs> Adolf Rusty Flobo Black Boys. Adolf, guys. No, uh, <laughs> no, but Rusty as a nickname is kind of weird, and it doesn't match him at all. I mean, is it because he's kind of a redhead? I don't know why that was the, the choice. Isn't he too old for a nickname, especially a nickname like Rusty? What were you going to say, Rachel? I think Rusty, I think of National Lampoon. Well, okay. so, and I, uh, I do wonder if that was really why that was in there, because of the way that he says Rusty at the end, the way that Larry says Rusty. It is a little reminiscent. And I'm just like, why would they, like, the, the fact that Rusty's wearing the beret with his name that says Rusty in European Vacation, and there's these French girls that are just laughing at him because he it says Rusty on it. Yeah. And I was just like, I, I can't imagine that that's what they were doing. But it's what it made me think of. It's what it made me think of. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I found it to all be very jarring. Yeah. And man, Susie didn't want him at that party. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, I, I don't want to kill him. Yeah, well. and kind of, maybe, sort of, kind yeah. of did. Yeah. I, I, we don't know. Yeah, we, yeah because uh, maybe. Alice, the assistant's not dead. This guy's not dead. Man, this could be Larry's fault too, somehow, mm. because he made him take Jeff to dinner. Yeah, I think that the the Larry David on trial might very well be the final episode. <laughs> <laughs> You've convinced me. Well, <laughs> and also it's funny because it's almost like Susie was going to kill Jeff until right. Rusty showed up. Yeah, she's like, "Oh, you! <laughs> what are you doing?" Um, yeah, no, look, I, uh, I, and sorry, I do need to circle back because there's two, there's one other thing about Latte Larry's that I forgot that we didn't talk about. I was just so, you know, uh, he, I, first of all, Larry says, I'd, I'd rather have a no coffee buyer than a defecator. Uh, but then also the idea that there'll be a coat rack and Purell at every table. Yeah. So lots of coat racks. And look, I think at, you know, growing up in another part of the country, a lot of times, yeah, at a restaurant, there are coat racks. Yeah. Are, but not at a coffee shop. No, Usually the there's like a coat rack. Yeah. You know, maybe like a closet, but it, most likely If not. it's a place where you have to get three courses and unbuckle your belt, they'll give you a coat rack. Like right. Like a Chicago deep dish pizza place or yeah. whatever. Uh, well, but I think it's kind of weird that, again, he's focusing on the wrong things. It's almost like this Spite store is going to have its own failures because you're so in tune to spiting, the stuff is not even that good. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, it, it just goes back to uh, Larry has n- never really needed to try and figure out how to earn a living. You know? <laughs> I mean, from comedy. I mean, That's real right. life Larry David, uh, you know. I mean, Teach me the ways. I would love to live, right? do nothing I but mean, do comedy all day. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You know, I mean, if you've, uh, if you've never read about, by the way, how uh, Larry quit Saturday Night Live as a writer and then came back on Monday exactly like what George Costanza did when he quit his job and then showed up. Like, that's actually from Larry David's life. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, it'll it'll tell you a lot of what you uh, you need to know uh, about him. So... Um, also, yes. the real Larry David... <laughs> I just Google this really fast. Yeah. He was a store cloak, li- uh, clerk, limousine driver, and P.S. historian. Historian? Huh. <laughs> that's what's, well, that's, that's what it says. <laughs> Um, I forgot about a celebrity that we saw in this episode, uh, Chris Martin. Yeah. Mostly because I don't think of him as a celebrity. Yeah, yeah I was like, I he was great about the When I hear his voice, <laughs> I, I, I'll turn off the radio. I don't but that's just think me. think he thinks of himself as a celebrity either. To be fair, he probably doesn't. But, uh, you know, he's a singer, and I don't think of him as that either. But anyway, I... <laughs> Hot takes. <laughs> he's on, on the list for the, the band at my wedding, No Coldplay. Okay. That's oh, actually yeah. what my list was. Really? No yeah. Coldplay. Okay. Never uh, and my uncle tried to tuck me out of it. I would know my wife's uncle, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> yeah, Hard are, line. Are, are you paying for it? Because if you're paying for it, sure, they can do it. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, wow, I, you're so I, angry. Okay, sorry, you're sorry. <laughs> look, look what Coldplay has done to us. Right? <laughs> let's let's be honest. Right. Hashtag marriage goals. No right. Coldplay. Right. That was uh, my wife didn't care either. She's like well, whatever. You know, it's fine because yeah. that's what I was in charge of was the wedding band, and she was in charge of everything else. Oh. So, yeah. uh, in any case. Uh, so I wasn't sure what I was going to say about him, but uh, I did enjoy the interaction that he tolerated, uh, uh, Dr. Rusty. 
Um, and I, I do like when they, when this show has sort of those, uh, you know. And by the way, uh, I was obviously very uh, demeaning of uh, Chris Martin just seconds ago. But if you remember, he was on the Ricky Gervais show Extras. Mm -hmm. It seems yeah. like he's probably a pretty funny guy. Yeah. And he yeah. has a pretty good sense of humor about yeah. the fact that he's Chris Martin and yeah. very well known for, one, being married to Gwyneth, to Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. two, having a daughter named Apple, three, consciously uncoupling. And then still going on vacation, you know. With all, so, uh, I don't know. I think he thinks the whole thing's probably a little ridiculous. That's what I was gonna say. I think of all the 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 pop star. Is that a good, not a rock star? He's a pop star, I guess. Yeah, I would say pop. Uh, sorry, Chris. I, I, I can't I, ask I, you. I, I can't, uh, ima I can't uh, imagine anybody his, that his, that a rock star. <laughs> I hate, bro. Uh, if, 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 if you think the Coldplay, I don't mean you. Well, yeah, if you're yeah. in the audience and you think Coldplay is a rock band, we we can talk. I'll give you. I'll 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 do high fidelity style and I'll give you a playlist. All so right, and then you can understand what rock band is. Here's my final thought on Coldplay, though. Listen, we we if, got eleven more minutes, so we might keep going. If we're talking about late '90s, I would have said more rock, like with the song "Yellow." When they got into the early 2000s, they definitely went pop. Just got off the bus? Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, they were like, pop it is. And okay. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. was going to say, I guess, in defense of them, uh, or at least Chris Martin, <laughs> is that when he does uh, roles, he's usually playing himself, a heightened version of himself. Yeah. And his comedy time is pretty good. I mean, I, I, I remember his, his time on uh, Modern Family. I just mentioned him. I think that was one of his funniest uh, entries up there. So I'm not a huge Coldplay fan. There's two songs oh. I like from them. I, I, There's literally two songs. I'm, I'm judging you so much right two? now. Two? Really? Two, two, that's two oh. too many. Well, then I shouldn't say how many I like all of them. <laughs> well, if you, of if you think Coldplay's a rock band, you think Maroon Five's a rock band. But anyway, oh, they're not a rock band. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, there we go. They're a band. They're Coldplay's yeah. definitely a band. I'm yeah. not saying they're not. But so were the Black Eyed Peas. All right. Uh, what are some of the uh, enduring thoughts? I don't think we had any news this week. No. But it, it, does anybody have any final thoughts before we get to our segment, our curb correction corner? I think. Uh, and I, I don't want to be like the uh, the negative Nancy here. Okay. Uh, the negative Neil here. Because I think uh, if you look back at all <laughs> Thank the... you for making it gender appropriate, by the way. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, if we go negative back... Negative Nigel for our friends across the pond. <laughs> Thank you, British. Uh, negative can... Nigel. <laughs> I'm so negative. Tell us, Gov. <laughs> Of all the, of all of us on the panel, I think I've had the least favorable look at some of the episodes. And I don't want the, the 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 narrative to be that I just hate this. I just feel like there's so much potential here. We bring all the players back and the storylines here. I'm still holding out hope for like that one or two like haymaker episodes that make you go, "Wow, this season was worth it to have it back in the comedy the, pantheon." The premiere was really strong. Agreed. I thought. And I thought that it's been good since then, but I don't know that any of them have been great since then. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, Rachel? It's not. It's not as funny as it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I wouldn't say. Somebody sounds thirty-two. Okay, boomer. Yeah, I know. Well, right? when I was ten years you know, old. <laughs> I mean, I I didn't watch from the very beginning because I wouldn't. Because you were been twelve. Old. Yeah. yeah. I got it. I got it. Like, but it's when okay. I did start watching, yeah, it was it was. Uh, I would say that there's more, more of the iconic, like hilarious episodes earlier yeah. on, and yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. I would keep watching, but. So if, they did, if, if they announced at the end of the season that there was going to be another season next year, I'd be like, that's great. Yeah, I, I'm just definitely going to still watch. Like, yeah. that's fine. But yeah, I, I I think if it ends really strong, even if it's the finale is really good, I think I'll be able to look more favorably on the season. Uh, well, let's get to our curb correction corner, which I think Adolf the dog would spell that word, all three of those words, a little differently. <laughs> but... <laughs> We're going to spell it all with C's. Uh, <laughs> Nigel. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, what is your, I mean, for those that don't know, the Curb Correction Corner is, we can agree with Larry on a lot of things. We probably disagree on a number, but what is the thing that you found most egregious in this episode, Rachel? The fact that he would even take the placard, because it's... Well, he, well, he, it's not like Wally offered it. He asked for it. He asked for it and then pressured him yeah. and then used it. And it's like, okay, there's a, re like, not to not to get on, like, you know, a high horse here or anything, but there's a reason why people have placards. Yes. And so I'm just like, okay, that's just wrong on so many levels that yeah. he would misuse it like that. And to have not figured out a way to replace it before Wiley got back, by the way. Yeah. Like, that's not the way Larry looks at the world. Like, why would he do that? Yeah. He's like, somebody's going to be angry at me. Yeah, and? <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, Flobo, your curb correction corner. I 
I agree. Also agree with you. That's like number two. That, I would. I that's would, not a great moment. Yeah, I, I, I would not dispatch someone with a disability to be a spy for me. That's just something <laughs> that doesn't seem right. You know, pull the car what? over. I'll do it. They would never expect it. No, well, he couldn't. Expect. He couldn't spy on Susie. Larry couldn't because right. she knows him. Yeah. So I'm the guy behind like bushes and trees. You know. Or, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But again, you're Larry David. You're worth a billion dollars. You could. You could hire a private investigator. I agree. Um, I'm gonna bring it back to the facilities at Latte Larry's. Uh, that lady's room, <laughs> I'm like, I mean, somebody had to build that for him? Yeah. Look, the PQ, we can argue on that, but at the we end can. of the day, at the end of the day, <laughs> right? I mean, if I went into a restroom and they had that, I'd be like, all right, sure. Yeah. Why not? Like, let's try the PQ. But the the the, the squat vomitorium, I don't even know quite what that thing is. Right. Uh, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like I, you know, Larry's just surrounded by all these enablers. There's nobody to point out to him, like, you know, this is a really bad idea. Of course, now that I'm saying it out loud, as soon as you tell him he shouldn't do something. He'll do it harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. He's like, all right, fine, no women's room. That might have been where right. that went to. <laughs> no but... women are allowed to pee. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that almost would be funnier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, honestly, he should just have done no restrooms. I mean, you know, a coffee shop. That's you're you're playing with fire there. But you know, <laughs> yeah. also just we'll go next door to to, I mean, uh, to Mocha Joe's. There are some coffee shops that don't have a public restroom. Yeah, so it's I don't not like it's unheard those. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had I, I had an argument uh, with a friend on the li- uh, ride back from a uh, from a long road trip where I just I really need to use the bathroom. And he said that he would stop at Subway. I'm like, Subway does not have public restrooms. And uh, lo and behold, uh, we go in. Of course, it, it, Subway doesn't have no, just, yeah. They don't. Have you ever seen one with one? You let me know. So you were like satisfied you won the argument, but still in pain because you used the bathroom? Like, how did that work? How'd you feel? Oh, no, I took a leak in his car. It's okay, right, right, right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right <laughs> yeah. And then I, and then I, hitch, I hitchhiked back from Palm Springs. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I am excited to see it all come together at the end of the season. Uh, a little bit baffled, really, as to what might happen. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let everybody know what we think. Yeah. And hopefully James will be back. I, for, I meant to mention at the top of the show, James, under the weather. Yeah. So uh, thanks to him for not bringing the coronavirus into our <laughs> I'm just assuming anytime anybody's sick, I just think, oh, coronavirus. Corona. Yeah, right? yeah. It has to be. Yep. It, it's gotten him already. Right. So, and before uh, it wasn't around, you're we'll, like, yeah, we'll yeah. have a montage for James next week. <laughs> Some of his best clips Wait, from the show. Not... <laughs> it's a coronavirus. How long does he got? I will remember. All right, we'll see. Now, you know what? I'll ask him next week. I'll ask him when it was wrong. I'm cured, guys. Yeah. Uh, all right. Shout out so, to James. Uh, that is all the time we have for this week, but uh, look for us next Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific. That is 6 Eastern. Until then, Rachel, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Rachel Goodman or on the Outlander, uh, Narcos Mexico Season 2, Stumptown, Doctor Who. We've got one more episode left to cover. And I think that's it for right now. Well, so- also over on oh. the Popcorn Talk, uh, Retro Anatomy of a Movie, where tomorrow at 3 Pacific, we will be covering the original Invisible Man in oh. honor of the new one with uh, Elizabeth Moss, which I haven't seen and will not see. It just doesn't look good. But we'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, Flobo Boys, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter, at Flobo Boys, on Instagram, at Flobito, and of course, Flobito.com. New content every week. I was gonna say you can't. I was waiting for you to. You can't not that. say it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Christian DMZ. And over here at AfterBuzz, you can find me and Flobo Thursdays at nine Pacific for the Star Trek Picard After Show. And of course, <laughs> also Thursdays over on the Popcorn Talk on Marvel Movie News at one Pacific. That's four Eastern. That is all the time we have, but we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.